giving me the honour to unveil this plaque on what was Riley's Fort in Easter week 1916, the scene of some of the fiercest fighting. Commandant Edward Daly's 1st Battalion 
was probably the one that faced the hardest fight uh, in Easter week at close quarters with the enemy and sometimes with hand-to-hand -hand combat. Daly's command was the only one which captured and destroyed a British barracks, Linen Hall Barracks across the way in Church Street. I want to acknowledge uh, those relatives who are here, uh, including uh, Frank Scholes and Paddy Holohan. I want to also acknowledge Councillor Kieran O'Moore, a colleague of mine, whose grandfather Sean O'Moore uh, was also uh, stationed here uh, in this area under the command of Edward Daly. And he later served as uh, the President Chair of the National Bay Association. The men and women who rallied to Edward Daly's call that Easter week were brave beyond measure. Like other comrades across the city and in the few locations outside Dublin that rose that Easter, they knew that they were taking on the might of the British Empire. But they were determined to show the Irish people and the world that the spirit of Irish freedom was not extinguished, that we were not a province not a source of cannon fodder for the slaughter on the Western Front, a source of cheap labour and cheap food for England, nor were we an anglicised backwater pre prepared to forget our language, our culture and our history. Their actions made very clear that the proud Irish nation was not beaten into submission. At the graveside of O'Donovan Rossa, P.H. Pearce said that the British government thought they had purchased half of them and intimidated the other half. He knew they were wrong, and he and his comrades set out to prove that with their lives. I want to commend the Four Courts Garrison uh, relatives for restoring this back to its rightful place. I commend you also, together with the 1916 Relatives Association, the Moore Street campaign groups, and the local history groups and society across the city, and societies across the city and across the country, who so magnificently marked the centenary of 1916 and have continued to honour our patriots. Let anyone think that this work is not necessary any longer. Do not forget that there are still voices in this state and outside it who seek to disparage the brave men and women of 1916. Our public service broadcaster RTE chose Good Friday to broadcast an interview with a certain celebrity who used the occasion once again to denigrate these men and women, what they stood for and what they did at Easter 1916. This same individual in 2016 compared our 1916 patriots, patriots to ISIS and to jihadist suicide bombers. He was allowed to go unchallenged last Friday as we prepared to mark the 102nd anniversary of Irie Amok McCoskey. In the same vein, I might mention the notorious wall in Glasnevin Cemetery. We are beside the site of the North King Street Massacre by the British Army's South Staffordshire Regiment, commemorated with a memorial erected by Terry Crosby and his committee in 2016. On that Glasnevin wall, the name of a soldier in the South Staffordshire Regiment was placed between the names of executed leaders, members of the Provisional Government, James Connolly and Sean McDermott. Shame. In contrast to all that, we are proud to remember these men and women for what they were, Irish freedom fighters whose cause can never be equated with the cause of the British Empire which they fought. Yes, everyone has the right to remember their dead on all sides of the conflict, but let it be done in a fitting and appropriate manner. We think especially today of Father Joseph Mellon, free man of the city of Dublin who died yesterday, Easter Sunday, the last surviving child of an executed 1916 leader. Take over the whole thing and do it locally. Do it locally. Father Joseph was an inspiration. Far dealish the Quivna Ahar Michael Mellon, dealish da hir dukish agus da younger dukish. We remember also a man who undoubtedly would have been with us here today, the late Noel Hughes, a Republican from this area who knew its story intimately and who was proud to tell that story. And I'm very happy that it was, it's uh, Noel's flag that we used to unveil the flag. He was very proud to tell that story. Tahar Joe Augusta Noel Chalk Hughes. This plaque highlights once again an area steeped in history as we remember on this exact location also the capture of Kevin Barry.
We think too of Edward Daly's sister, Kathleen Daly Clark, who lost both Ned and her husband Tom Clark to the Kilmainham Jail firing squads. She was the first woman Ard Vera Valiatlia, and I'm very proud to follow in her footsteps. Let this and all such memorials remind us of the sacrifice of those who fought and died. Let them also be a reminder that the, the, the work remains unfinished. The work of building a republic that truly cherishes all the children of the nation equally. A free, peaceful and united Ireland. Lanamy der I, Lesha Number 10. And I would now like to invite Paddy Moulihan to lay a wreath for all our deceased relatives who fought for Irish freedom in 1916. She is.